Right now, I'm competing in an FPV racing event called Race Gow. You set up a course, you race through the track, you upload your video, and then, like, the fastest pilots win prizes. But Race Gow isn't what we're here to talk about today. I'll put a link to the Race Gow website down in the video description below if you are at all interested in, well, racing, tiny whip racing, or even quadcopters in general. It's really fun to participate in. But this isn't about Race Gow. No. What today's video is about is this quadcopter that I have been racing with. This is the Beta FPV Meteor 65 Pro, and I can't help but feel like maybe if it had a little more oomph, I'd be faster. You see, people whose opinion I trust about tiny whoops and tiny whoop racing say 19,500 kV 0802 motors on this Meteor 65 Pro are not the go-to for the best possible handling. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to replace the motors with these Weebleed FPV Bleeder V2 26,500 kV. No, 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 no. We're going to replace them with these Gore V2 28,500 kV. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to replace them with these, the Screamers, 32,500 kV. We're going to replace them with the highest kV freaking motor that I can find. And we're going to see if that makes my times any fast. Like, I have, I have numbers. I've been running this course for hours trying to get a faster time. And I think my quadcopter's handling is a little sloppy. And I think I could be faster with a higher kV motor. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. And uh, it's going to be really easy to replace the motors because they're just a drop-in replacement. They have plugs. They just drop right in and should screw on just fine. It, I suspect we're going to have to do some modifications to the PIDs, but we'll get to that later in the video. And we're just going to unplug them from the flight controller. Now it's time to test fly this and see what a difference almost doubling the KV of the motors makes on its flight performance. Will it fly normally just a lot faster? Will the PIDs freak out? I have a confession to make. I'm actually Joshua from the future and I know the answer. Let me show you. At first, everything seems sort of okay. It's flying fairly smoothly. But if I get on the throttle, there's clearly a problem. And if I do a sharp turn, there's a real problem. You see, it just drops out. And I'll let you uh, give you a little insight into my troubleshooting process, uh, because I have tried to troubleshoot this and failed. One of the things I notice is that it's happening both directions, both to the left and the right, not just one direction. And that tells me that this is not like just a bad motor or a bad ESC, which I wouldn't really expect because they're brand new motors and it's fairly new ESC. This is something about the quad as a whole. And I've tried different PIDs. I've tried changing the timing. I've tried the DMAG compensation. I've tried all kinds of things. And it just, as soon as you get on the throttle, it just freaks out. And so, I don't know if this is like the motors are just like, it, the flight controller can't handle these motors or something, but rather than try and solve this specific problem, I kind of just want to fly today. So I'm just going to pick a whole different quadcopter with a whole different flight controller and try a different set of motors on that and see if it's any better. This is the Mobula 6 HD Zero Edition, and it also has 0802 19,000 kV motors, similar to the Meteor 65 we were flying, but this one's got the HD Zero video system. And before I put the new screaming motors on it, it would only be scientific to run a few laps on this course and see what my times are on the original motors to see if I get any faster. Hey, I'll take any opportunity to try to set some lap times. I feel like I've got three 12s in me with this, which is a little faster. Whereas with the Mobula 65, Meteor 65, I was struggling for three 13s and any 12 at all was a miracle. JB, lap nine, 12.1. Let's see. JB, lap 12, 12.6. Give me an 11. JB, 
13, 11.9. There it is. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, I think this one's a little faster. I don't know if that's gonna be because, oh God, the battery's died. I think this one's a little faster. I don't know if that has to do with the video system, which is just categorically better, or the build or the motors. It feels more in control than the Mobula did. Let's put the Ripper motors on it and see what difference it makes. All right, so here's the exact same quad. Nothing has changed about this Mobula 6 except the motors. We've gone from 19,000 to about 28,000 kV, and that means that whatever the ratio of those two numbers is, we're gonna get that much more RPM out of the motors. We're just gonna see if it flies. Except I didn't put a freaking battery in it, so I have to go back inside yet again to get a battery. Be right back. Here we go. Oh God. Oh, it's jittery. You hear that in the motors? I'll bring it closer to the camera. You hear the motors kind of trilling? Just barely, you can hear a little trilling. But it's mostly okay. Ooh. I got a little shake on the full throttle punches and a little bit of issue with prop wash oscillation. So, little shake on full throttle. Overall though, I actually think it's flying pretty good, especially for a race quad where you usually want that, well, <laughs> racers usually want them kind of on the edge of a good pid tune. I'm just gonna fly this pack a little more and uh, I actually think I'm gonna leave the pids where they are. This is, oh, I tell you what. Oh, it's destroying my battery. We're already at 3.3, but if I stop and land, what do we come back up to? What do we bounce up to? 3.6, oh, that's not that much sag. I think we're gonna get a lot shorter flight time, but Jeez, this is so much better for this uh, wide open area in my yard. This 65 millimeter whoop is just trucking. It feels so sharp through the corners. It still doesn't fling like a big quad, you know, but a lot of times on uh, with 65 millimeters, you'll end up not having enough speed to really make an open area like this feel small. It just kind of feels like you're plodding along. But the real question is, this is gonna be super freaking overkill when I take it in there on the tiny little course. Only one way to find out. And I'm tempted to try it in acro mode, but I'm not gonna. Oh God, oh God, oh God, what changed? <gasps> what changed is this is now a full battery and the PIDs are too aggressive. We gotta turn the PIDs down. So we're gonna go into the PID tuning tab and they didn't use the sliders. They manually typed the PIDs. So how am I gonna adjust them? Uh, what if I do mode on? Oh, there we go, perfect. So let's see if I just turn the master multiplier down to like 1.0 or even 0.9 and see if just keeping the proportions of the PIDs the same, but just dialing them all down proportionally to each other to compensate for the much higher RPM of the motors. Okay, it hasn't taken off to the sky, that's good. Boy, I can hear those motors trilling. Let's see how she flies. Oh God, oh God. Have I just cost myself throttle resolution? That's the big question that I wanna tackle here. I wasn't near full throttle on the last one, so it's not the higher top end that these higher KV motors are gonna give me. That's gonna matter out there when I'm in a big open area and I need the speed. What I'm hoping to get out of this is sharper stick response, just better feel, better cornering that maybe helps make up for some of my lack of ability as a pilot. Here we go. It feels better. JV, flat five, it's gonna take some getting used to. It feels like it's handling better. JV, flat six, 
0.0. Oh, that was a wide corner. Oh, it feels better. It's gonna take some getting used to, I think, but it feels better still. What I want is sharper response from the PIDs. I don't need more throttle. Let's turn the throttle down. I'm gonna go here in the PID tuning tab. No, in the rate profile. And we're gonna choose throttle limit uh, 75%. Throttle limit scale 75%. Boy, you really hear those motors trilling on the full battery. It's going to take a minute for my muscle memory to adjust. But I should have better throttle control. JV, lap Lap two, 12.2. Oh God, this feels way better. JB, lap three, 11.3. Oh God, that's way faster. Oh, wide. JB, lap four, 12.3. Okay, here we go. Oh God, oh God, battery's dying. I'm feeling the sag. JB, lap 10, 11.6. Oh, battery died. Whoa, 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 I'm gonna fucking rock this. La 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 la. I'll fucking take it. So it's time for the results. How much difference did going from the uh, 19,000 kV to the 28, 30 something thousand kV motors make in my time? Before I tell you that, let me just tell you this. If you wanna buy these motors, there's a link in the video description below. We Bleed FPV is a hell of a vendor for all your whoop stuff. Check them out, it's an affiliate link. It means a lot to me when you click that link. Enough said about that. Also, I have a Patreon. If you like the content that I'm making and you want me to keep freaking making it, throw me two bucks a month. But no, throw, don't, don't limit it to two bucks a month if you feel like I've earned more. Like, you can sign up at any level you want. There's a few people who sign up for $200 a month. I don't know what they're thinking. It's up to you. Link in the video description of my Patreon. It sure means a lot. How much difference did it make? Well, I mean, you're not gonna be surprised when you see the result. It didn't make me a lot faster. My just leave that down there. My best time for three consecutive laps on the Meteor 65 Pro was 37 seconds and change. My best time uh, for three consecutive laps with the better motors was uh, 35 seconds and change. So that's not quite 10% improvement. And some of that could be attributed to the fact that I was using HD zero instead of analog. Some of that could be attributed to the fact that I just had more reps. But I'll say this. I really liked the way the motors felt better. 
they felt sharper. There's a problem with Tiny Whoops, which is that they don't push a lot of air, and that makes their handling feel really mushy. And that's why a lot of pilots are going to these ultra-high KV motors to try to make up for it. And I do think the motors achieved that. Also, it was much nicer flying out here. If you've got a Tiny Whoop and you want to fly it outdoors and kind of do some freestyle, but you, you don't, don't want to go to a bigger quad, like because your neighbors or the FAA or whatever you're reasoning, if you want a Tiny Whoop and you want to fly it out here in a bigger environment, these motors make a huge difference in the ability to get from point A to point B. For this kind of tight Tiny Whoop racing, it's more subtle. Like, it's better, but like, it's not like, rip snortingly better and I actually had to put a throttle limit on it to make the throttle more controllable. So I don't know how much benefit there is there. Hmm. Uh, if you wanted to hear more about my progress through race gow, I mean, it's only my first week. Surely I'm gonna get even better as I go through week by week. If you wanna hear more about my progress, I'll put a link in the video description to my race gow playlist where you can follow along with me as I go through it. I'll see you there.